Oh, I'm online. Put put your vote. Don't stop the count. <laughs> Great. So we're just waiting just a few seconds. It's a bit spooky, it's a little bit like future, you know, when you get this microphone and the future can talk into your iPhone or into your Samsung and say what you want to hear and what you want to say and everything. So I think we start now. Uh, Hooper told me that uh, we are running a little bit out of time, so I will speak really, really fast. And I say hello. No, I don't say hello, I say moin. When you come to Hamburg, you can say moin in the morning, you can say moin to lunch, you can say moin in the evening, and when you say moin and make this, you get two beers on a bun. No problem at all. My name is Michael. I'm the head of CSR and HR of the F. St. Pauli Club. And just to make me safe, how many people of you have heard about FC St. Pauli? When you can raise your hands up. Okay. Is it, and how many people of you have heard of FC St. Pauli about sports and success? Winning trophies, championships? <laughs> yes, that's the hard reality I live in. Yes. Everybody knows FC St. Pauli, but nobody <laughs> knows about sports and football successes. So you can imagine it's about the work. And us in FC St. Pauli, it's a lot about values. It's a lot of purpose and all the other stuff. But for all of you, maybe, uh, and we saw a lot, lot of films, and now I think uh, we get another, another one, but from the perspective of the FC St. Pauli. We're the ones who celebrate the game, but would never sell our souls. values really pay off. The ones that keep their own head. Asking why before screaming yes. As much as we like complaining, we love doing even more. And even on match day, we don't switch off our brains. <laughs> right, the ones who are famous for losing. who remain independent. <laughs> That's the way we like it. So, FC St. Pauli, from deep inside. A little bit of marketing, right? It's really marketing. But when we talk today about the topic fan facilitation participation, you will see it's a core element of our work, even in CSR, 
business. Um, but before we talk about it, let's talk about a little bit uh, about the uh, hard facts of FC and Pauli. We have 33,000 members. They not all, all do sports. They are just uh, passive members because uh, the fan base and the member base are the same. The fans want to get hurt in, into the club. So we have a lot of members, we have a lot of followers on social media. We have five million fans in Germany for a club who's never winning any trophy, quite good. And uh, our stadium, we have uh, th th nearly 30,000 people in there. It's mo mostly sold out on match day. And we have a big neighborhood because St. Paul is a district of Hamburg, right? So the district made us. And uh, we made a little bit the district, you will see for the words. What about the club? We have 477 uh, people who are working for the FC St. Pauli. We have uh, a board, that is volunteer board, five bo volunteering board members. So uh, my chief is not paid by the club. I am, but my chief is not. Uh, we have eight managing directors, I'm one of this. And we have, uh, we, we think that the uh, ambition and the surroundings of uh, professional football in Germany is that not only one can decide, we have to build uh, circumstances with people, with their knowledge, to get the right decision in the right way. So we are eight managing directors. And we, ha we are still a normal club in Germany. So we are, our general meeting is the biggest decision gremium that, that you can have. So they can told me every year, they can, uh, what I have to do in my work or not. And history and titles, yeah, titles, so sorry, uh, not really, not one. Maybe you, you can see we won uh, against the HSV, our big brother in, in Hamburg, the last five derbies, we won them. So we were number one of Hamburg in the moment. And we are number one on the second league in Germany. So uh, in the moment, we're feeling quite good. But uh, still, we have no titles, but we have legions, football, you know them all, Stani, Ball, you know them, Walter Frosch. Really, really legions. So, but we have a museum without trophies, okay? If you come, you will, you will see it. Okay, what are we? We are a little bit like Barca. Any, any, any Barca colleagues here? A little bit. We're more than a club, but not on the pitch, right? <laughs> so, but when we're talking to you, when we're lo looking at you and you know, what your story is, it's nearly the same. It's quite different. But when we get the success on the pitch, we talk again, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you, as, as I mentioned before in the introductions, our values are really, really important for us. We are against fascism, homophobia, all this stuff. We are really against it. We are a little bit of rebellious. We want to make uh, idealistic. We, we think really, and this is a vision, from us, we think that another football is possible, even in the circumstances of commercialization uh, that we have at the moment, where so many people put so many money into the professional football, we don't want it. We want to be a club, we want to be a, 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 um, a member based club, but also we want to play professional football. And this is quite a dynamic situation for us. But uh, I think uh, I, uh, the, the point of idealistic that we think that another football is possible is really, really important for us. And you see down there, football, yeah, we play football, but sometimes it's not even the core business of us all. The core business is talking about values and then hope to be uh, successful in playing football. So today I want to talk to you and give you five examples about uh, fan facilitation and involvement in our club to make good decisions. The first one is raising funds and give, giving to communities. It's our daily job, it's your daily job. We heard a lot of projects. So what we're doing is uh, raising funds, free funds, not for projects, not for uh, really projects. For example, when you come to the Milan tour and drink a beer, you get this cup and you play a deposit of one euro 50 for this. And after the game, after you drink out, you can decide, you bring it back and get your money back, or you throw it in these cans and spend it and raise funds for the communities. And then we have uh, a brand, it's called Keats Helden, Keats Heroes in, German, in, in English. Keats is the name of a Keats Heroes, Keats Helden. 
And we have a, a, a board of Kitzhelden, the council, these are these guys. They have to talk about the applications. Is it okay, is it not okay, how much money do they want? And then they uh, have a discussion about it. We call for ap applications three times a, a season. And then they have to vote for it. And even there's one person who don't want this project, the project is gone. But uh, when all six said, hey, it's okay, we can do the project. Um, and it's very, very special, this council, because it's the club with three people. We are no no nominated this year, and three people from the members and the fan scene. And they have to talk about which project is great, which not, where we want to go, where not. And uh, yeah, and giving the funds into uh, the projects. These are mainly projects into the district of St. Pauli or projects of the fan scene itself. Okay, so this is the process we run with this. Or just as this is just a very, very new one. We have now uh, a, a quota for uh, our board, and this is a, a decision from 2021, but the process began in 2019. A member of our general meeting says, it's time for the professional football that women, women are responsible and take part in decisions, and not only in the stadium or outside. The club. So there was an ap 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 application, and the member, uh, the, the general me meeting, adopted this re re resolution. We started a process with workshops, talking about it, what is necessary that we promote women into the board, what do they need, and what the women need. And uh, this was not on only that men are talk uh, talked about what women need, the women building networking looking for each other, telling what to do. And then, of course, we have a legal assessment to, uh, to modify our uh, um, club status. And then in May, nearly 100% of all members say, yeah, we want a quota in board and management positions. So in the moment, we have two women and three guys. This is our president. This is my direct uh, vice president, Essien. And now we have two women and three guys in the board. And now we are working on the process, process about the managing directors, because the managing directors are men, white, middle-aged men. But they get money, so we have to think about it. What do we need that more women came up into the uh, man managing director level? Very, very good process with my colleagues in this uh, managing director level because uh, they not all, all say, yeah, that's a great idea. Very, very important, but I think it's a good one to, uh, to tell you how uh, powerful, powerful our uh, general meeting is with all our members. And of course, sustainability. I think for you all, and even for us, it's a very, very big uh, topic in the moment. Even through the pandemic, <clears throat> the, uh, the fans raised their voices to doing more sustainable things into the professional fo football. So uh, we made an inventory and assessment on 2019. Then we uh, built up working groups with fans, club members, uh, e even with our employees. And now we have a concept with uh, 24 goals and 372 milestones that we want to roll out in 2022. And this concept is now uh, approved by management board to get all the things that lays behind of the SDGs, bring into the club and make it happen that we are going to the way to more sustainability into the FCS and Pauli. And <clears throat> This is maybe uh, the famous one from Germany because um, last year our contract with our um, um, with Under Armour runs out, and Under Armour was was our uh, team sport co co collection partner, and we said, "Wow, okay, um, what about the idea first when we don't go to Adidas, to Reebok, to uh, Puma, or something else? Just thinking about." What is it when we make our own chicos, our own 
Team Sport Collection. And it began in 2016 when the member were, uh, resolution for more environmental sustainability in our merchandising adopted. Then, of course, you know this, working groups with all and then we transforming all the entire merchandising collections. And I think when you heard, heard of some you, you, you see all the skulls stuff, you, get, you know this, right? So this is all GOTS and fair trade. GOTS and fair trade. This was the first step. And then we say, okay, it's time for us to make the next step. step. And then this happened. We are now, since this season, our own uh, team sport collection producer. And this is also all GOTS, GOTS, and fair trade, and it's, but it's okay. So the sport is very, very com comfortable with it. And so we wanted to create a real sustainable team sport collection. And I think it's good because when you see the certifications that's done, but we're knowing we are not perfect, but we are on a better way. Uh, to make it less, um, to make it always better to, uh, for, for the next season, for example, and to make it really sustainable, um, reshooting members from the F from, from the club, not on, not models that present the chicos. Just uh, for example, this is uh, one of our blind foot footballer team. This is one of our women's team, and this is a uh, David who is a season ticket holder in the stadium, and this is the campaign for our Chico. So you see a long way, but it's possible to be on a team sport, uh, uh, to make your own team sport collection, and we never sold so many Chicos in this season than ever before. A different process, um, it's about the museum. In the year 2010, we celebrate our 100th birthday, and there was a temporary anniversary ex exhibition of the club. But this increased the wish of the members and the fans to make a big museum, a, a, a really big museum. And um, so we have a, a rebuilding the stadium, and um, there was a good Good, good idea from the club uh, to build a police station directly into the museum, uh, directly into the stadium. In Sao Paulo, the, the talking between fans and police is not always easy. Maybe you know it when fans want to demonstrate or fans and, and the police came and say, no, it's not a good idea. So the club made a decision and say, no, no, with this restructure into the stadium, there will be a police station. It's a really, really good idea, and I think it's possible. So the fans and the members said, no, that's not a good idea. And, and we said, okay, if you don't think so, that, that is a good idea. So then we want from you a conceptuation and ideas for what can happen in these rooms. And we give them the space to discuss and to think about a really, really a museum for the FC St. Pauli. And, and then in, 2000, uh, in 2017, we hand over the rooms to the fans and members. Uh, the police station is now outside the stadium. And in 2020 now, the first exhibition opened of the museum, and this museum is only run by fans and members. It's not running by the club. Very, very special because I would say ah, it's easy for a club to make a museum. I don't, but now it's in, in fan hands. And this is maybe a part of projects when you raise up the voice of the fans and the members and take them responsibility for this. And not only say that the fans and mem mem members say, hey, we don't want, we want that you do it, so do it. And we say, okay, you have an idea, come to us. And, and clear it up to you what you want to make out of it. Why is this process or these examples so important for us? I think doing w the right thing with good decision needs participation. It's necessary to involve the, 
the, the main stakeholders, stakeholders, fans. What is football about? It's about fans. Then, building expertise and understanding. You don't, we don't have any expertise for all problems of, of the world in our club. So we need somebody who comes to, to comes and bring the expertise in us. We're reducing criticism from the fans and members, if we're working together. We creative, innovative business cases. Remember this one? And also we strengthen the loyalty between club and fan base. So we're working together because, think in our uh, vision, another football is possible. We want this. And this and the fan base is really, really important for this and also our members. And it is very authentic when you are a purpose-driven organization. And we heard tomorrow morning, uh, today, mo um, to <laughs> today, we heard a lot of purpose. And I think purpose is one of the main things we are ta talking about in football. So these are the effects. And I think uh, the five examples were, were OK. But now, it's for me important when we talk about it. Do you have questions about it? Do you have criticism about it? Do you have remarks? So I want to hear you. Yeah, please. Yeah, um, it's a lot of discussions, but you have to. Uh, uh, what we do is uh, we discuss between uh, discuss between club and the members. Yeah, but sometimes we get third persons in there to moderate that you have a good result at the end. And these are different methods. You can use uh, open space, for example, a bar camp. You can use uh, um, other ways to discuss. The methods, they are very, very different. Then we have um, regular meetings, a dialogue with fans and club, that's once a month. It's very, very, uh, but this is then all themes of all the clubs. It's not uh, concentrate of one theme. So it's very, very, yeah, it's very wide. Thank you. I've got two questions. Yeah. Ah. No, I don't think so. When, when you make the process right, uh, or let, let, let me say in, in other words, that man, we have enough in the football system, maybe. What we need uh, is a structure and processes to empower women that they want to take part. Because in our stadium, for example, there are 30% of women there in, in the stands. And I think we need structures that women feel empowered to say, hey, OK, I, it's able to be part of the football system. But in the moment, with all the men in all the relevant positions, it's more or less a body system. Now, would you say that you change your organizational culture then to allow women to thrive more? Uh, the organization now, we have a diversity process, really. When we're talking about, and this is good that CSR and HRS together on one hand, when we're talking about employee branding, when we're talking about the processes when people come to us. And there, and for example, when we, um, we have, um, we need some, some person, then we say, I oh, need to be strong, you need to be 100% and everything. These are words that men like. But women say, oh, come on now, maybe not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking as a man about women, so I don't know if, if it's a sex, sex. Is it the, the thing? A little bit? No, OK. Um, so we are changing our processes when we want to get new people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sure, we have fans in, in, in our stadium uh, which are more, this is an ultra club, but they act more like hooligans, are looking for violence and looking for the other, for the way fans. Yeah, right, we have them. But these are not the main persons in the fan scene. We, this is too much for us. This we don't. There we have a really, really disagreement about what is being football. Football is not uh, fighting against each other. Yeah, Barcelona, yeah. Yeah, it's different participating in different working groups. What I can say is when, uh, um, when we're talking about a fan base, the really, really active fan base is about 2,000, 2,500 people. This is really, really active, and they are very, very dominant into the stadium. But uh, the, uh, it depends on the project, how many people are involved in the project. Yes, right. For example, or via Twitter or via homepage or something. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, just time and I'll skip for the Yeah, time. I feel you. Yeah. Yes, um, you know, I've mostly seen you guys when you see the board and you come over to very diverse cities. Are there any plans to have further representation of the demographics of the city on the board? Demographic? Uh, We have to, yeah. It's our, but uh, that's the next step. But that's a really, really good point, yeah. Thank you. It's difficult for me because the uh, St. Pauli history is very, very special because uh, all what F. St. Pauli is, it's about the fans and the members. What they built, it's not the club. I remember when I was a little, little guy, I was Antifa, yeah? and there were the, uh, the, the squatters into the Hafenstraße, and I went the first time uh, to St. Pauli. And I went there because I know it's political. I don't go there because of looking football. And I, and I remember the president at this time said, oh, colorful hair, punk walkers, I don't like them, they have to go out the stadium. But as you know, we are here to stay. So the way of F, F. San Pauli is very, very special, and uh, I'm not in the world to give other clubs tips or, or, or something because San Pauli is so special in the history. But what I guess is um, when, and this is more or less your point in the pre pre presentation, when you begin to transform your club itself, when you look into you, what you want to be as a club, as a professional football club, then you go on a journey, and I think, I'm really, really sure that and one part of the journey will be we have to need to talk to the fans and to the member and, and to the base. And listen to them, what they tell us, what we can do. I think this is the tip that I can give, a transformatic way for the clubs, for the organizations. Yes, please.
Yeah. Uh, just for my understanding, it's uh, the question about the cost there. When we have a uh, Reebok or Puma there, it's we get getting more money. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, this was really, really tough, tough to handle because um, this trickle is cheaper than the trickle from Under Armour from last season. It's, it's cheaper when we sell it to the fans or the members. And this is because we don't... Uh, I don't know what, what is your club? Yeah. When you sell your trickles, I think a part of, of the sum of the price is getting to Reebok, Puma, I don't know where your, your partner is. This is getting all to us. So we don't, so, uh, and we have, th we have thought about we will sell more tricots than any other when we make it on our own. So it's more or less the same now than with Under Armour. Okay, yeah. Um, I think the quality is, th as we are working with experts on this, right? We, are we don't have our own uh, fabric or something. We're working with experts. These are in the Portugal or in, uh, in, in the Turkey. And these are also producing for other, for other brands. And uh, they told us what to do. We have three, three people in the product de development for this, and they're working with experts that the stuff is okay and ev everything is good. Was that the question about? Sorry, yeah, but it was about even though it's made more ethical, if you ever ask if you don't, if we don't move away from the model where there's a constant, where it's more or less throwaway, where it's every season, that, the, that it's unsustainable anyway. Ah, okay. More ethically made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about a quick question uh, about the handling stuff. Somebody had to translate for me. I don't know. Uh, you are Scottish, right? <laughs> Thanks for your question. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Because <laughs> our plans are we, we are developing for every season a new Trico and hoping that the, uh, that the people who buy Trico now, because they weren't always the actual one, also buy the next season. So, but we are hoping. We are still It's the first year. So... Uh, Maybe your, your question, when we meet each other uh, next year in Liverpool or something, no, then you tell me again and then I'll, I will give you the numbers. If, if, am I right or not? Thanks a lot. Any other remarks, questions? Question. Yeah, um, <coughs> it's very new. It's uh, since two years. Uh, I have a veto, so when our partners come and say, "Ah, we have a new company who want to be sponsor, Esso or Shell," it's a good idea. I can say no, we don't take it. So I have a veto on this for every new partnership. Uh, in the moment, of course, we are transforming our policy of sponsorships and sponsors. We want to. We want to get the brands who are thinking the same way as we uh, in, in sustainability and equal rights and so on. But this is a transforming pro process in the moment. Yeah, please. A little bit. It's, 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 it's difficult in German to say. For example, when we op open the sta stadium in the moment, we say it's only for vaccinated people or people who get, uh, uh, who get through the coronavirus. We, 
we don't accept uh, um, um, fans or members who are only tested. Because we think that uh, vaccinated is uh, the best way to show solidarity with the communities. And so uh, this is our way. But in Germany, it's very, very different. Depends. Uh, was difficult for some fan scenes, from uh, away fan scenes. For example, uh, we had uh, two games uh, without away fans because these away fans said no. When you say uh, vaccinated and uh, um, through Corona, um, we don't come. But this. No. No, that. The internal decision to uh, only vaccinate it and so on was clear for all. We don't have discussion. We only have the discussion with uh, the other clubs. So, no more questions, no more remarks. Maybe later on. Then I say thank you all. Thanks for having me. And please understand my bad English and my bad understanding. So, so. Thanks a lot. See you soon. It's, uh, not bad English. Perfect English. Uh, don't go anywhere. This is my music. Every time I come on the stage, that music comes on. It's like having your own theme tune. Um, yeah, don't leave because we're going to set up now for uh, a little panel session called uh, Future of Football. So we'll just give the guys a couple of minutes to set up and uh, we'll, we'll talk through that. <laughs>